Hi everyone, this is the fifth project update for my ESP32 smartwatch project. Since the last project update, I've created two new versions of the watch firmware, but the hardware has remained the same. Both firmware versions are available in the GitHub repo, which is linked in the description of this video. The goal of the V2 firmware was to improve the responsiveness of the watch to user input. It utilizes light sleep instead of deep sleep. This allows the watch to become active in milliseconds after the screen is tapped. V2 also supports accelerometer wake up, allowing for the user to check notifications without tapping on the screen. All the core functionality is the same from the previous version with support for reading phone notifications and controlling Spotify playback. It also has some features that aren't yet available in the current watch firmware, such as viewing calendar events for the day. Unfortunately, this firmware fell victim to the same issues that plagued the first version of the firmware. The code wasn't well organized and all the screen elements were manually drawn with no enforced structure, which got in the way of creating new features. The V2 firmware also had limited support for animations and interactions, making it difficult to create a good looking UI. The issues with the V2 firmware were easier to fix by simply starting over. The current firmware is version 3, and it seeks to solve a lot of the issues that were present in versions 1 and 2 with a focus on extensibility. The newest firmware enforces a more rigid structure for the creation of drawable elements on the screen. It also includes support functions to automatically handle touch and drawing visual elements. These changes compartmentalize the code and allow for many items to be reused and extended without adding much additional complexity. With the V3 firmware, the watch now has the following features. Swipe gestures for navigating between UI pages, phone app icons on the watch home screen, Spotify control, and a calculator, now with a backspace key. The app icons on the home screen are used to display the current app notifications that are pulled from the phone. Tapping these icons will provide the title of all current notifications associated with that app. Tapping on the Spotify icon will also bring up the media controller, which can be used to play, pause, or change the current song on Spotify. The addition of application icons to the home screen was a major challenge. I initially added the commit for app icons to the Android app almost a year ago, and only recently was able to create a stable implementation on the ESP32 to handle displaying these icons. The icons are requested from the connected phone. These are then encoded in base64 and sent as a text string over BLE. It takes a few seconds to transmit even one 32x32 32 32 app icon. To cut down on this, the ESP32 stores received icons in spiffs and then loads them as needed. Loading from local storage allows the watch to operate with similar responsiveness to the text-based notification display while also offering a better look and feel. The Android app has also undergone significant updates since the previous video log. In order to increase the reliability of communication, the watch has been moved to a peripheral role instead of a central. This change was made to the Android app for versions 2.0 and above. Firmware version 1 must use a version below 1.20, while firmware versions 2 and 3 are designed to work with the most recent Android app version. Recent updates to the Android app have added the ability to read calendar events and obtain the application icons, along with general bug fixes. The Android app repo is linked in the description. It includes the source code, compiled APK files, and a minimal Arduino example to enable an ESP32 to read notifications from the phone. This has been a quick overview of the progress on the ESP32 smartwatch project. If you'd like to read in more detail about this project, check out the project's hackaday.io page, which is linked in the description, along with the project's GitHub repo. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next log.